guys and welcome back to the Nordic Tourist and to the fourth part in our Wild West of Finland series. Summer has passed and it's now in the forefront of autumn and we're on our way to our next destination. After a wonderful summer vacation where Mark travelled Finland's southern regions while I chose to venture north to Finland's border with Russia in the east, before returning home to our area, we really see how lucky we are with the area we live in. The deep, rich, cultural background of the region along with its beautiful unique nature we soon both begin to realize is very unique to the southern Ostrobotnian area. In saying that, today we are moving on from Kalavanabeta in Sanyoki, the capital of the southern Ostrobotnian region. We are traveling 63 kilometers about one hour northeast near to the town of Aliyarvi, back in the area of Lake Lapayarvi. In an earlier video, we were on the frozen surface of the lake for the ice carousel. This time though, we're high above the southern shores of Europe's largest crater lake. We are visiting an area of historical, geological and mythical interest. A place where historical artifacts over a hundred years old can still be viewed in the wild Finnish nature. It is also one of the few places in Finland where natural caves can be found. Finally, turning off the road and onto an unpaved road, you will start a winding journey up the hill towards the summit. There is a small parking lot near the top with room for about four cars. If you find yourself in need of a park, there is ample room on the dirt road into the park, but today we were able to find one. Hey guys, so uh, we've rocked up to the very top car park in Puhavori here at the moment. Um, I'll just show you a little signage. There's a bit of a map here to sh show you where we are. We're here on the red dot and there's a path around the actual mountain of Puhavori. So basically from the trail here, from the very top of the car park here, you've got three areas to walk through. Um, you got one over to the side there on the right, the direct one straight directly up the path there and uh, you've got one off to the side here another thing off to the side here we're just gonna head into up the trail there just up the hill right there <laughs> So we're heading up the, the main trail to the very, very top of Puhorvori mountain. It seems like a very short walk. It's set on the sign, possibly 100 meters up the top of here. So very, from the very uh, top car park to the top of the mountain is about, I don't know, 100 meters across rock. So we're almost up the top now um, to the top of the mountain. And from here, you should be able to see, I think it's Lake Lapayarvi, but uh, Mark is the expert on that. So we might have him talk about it a bit more, but this is the top of Puhavori. He might not be able to see any elevation on the camera, but there is definitely some elevation here. So it's not quite luck else again. Uh, so, even though Etelapohem is known for being very flat, we've come to two destinations now that are actually quite the opposite of that. So, if you look out there, you can just see Lake Lapayarvi, and yeah, what have you got to say about it, Mark? Yeah, it, I spoke with Temu Erman, who's a craterologist, and Lapayarvi was created by meteorite landing on the in this area thousands millions of years ago and it's the largest one in europe the largest crater lake in europe um the thing that he told me that, that really sort of stuck with me is that the edge here where we are standing used to be the shoreline for the baltic sea when the baltic sea used to be a lake so now it's kind of at the at the west coast and the southern coast yeah, of yeah. Finland, but it used to be here. Here, wow. So yeah, like that's it. Like you you literally walk 100 meters up, and you're on top of the actual mountain itself. And when you look out the front, you can see the lake 
but uh, we're just going to continue on because there's some other historical artifacts and stuff. There's a cave and there's a few things that we want to show you. Yeah, so this is the staircase that leads down from the top of the mountain. And uh, we're about to come into what looks like the area where the cave is. So uh, yeah. Okay, so what we found here is the remains of a stone hut of a hermit that used to live up here. I reckon if you want to be a hermit, this is a pretty good place to be on your own. Um, this was about 100 years ago in the 1920s. A hermit called Jarko Reipakka lived up here. And you can see the kind of the walls that were his house. But we're also going to go and have a look at the cave that served as his sauna. All right, thanks for that, Mark. That little bit of information. Yeah, it's quite quite uh, unusual. You come down the the hill here, and you you come down the hill from just up there, from the top of the uh, mountain itself, down the stairs, and you find this little man-made cave-type house thing. Yeah, it's quite weird. So um, we're going to head on and head down just a little bit further to the cave section that everyone's talking about um how the guy used to sauna yeah so just the cave there that's that seems to be what looks like the cave there it's underneath this big big massive set of rocks you can go into the cave there it looks like someone someone has definitely played with that and uh mark's just inspecting where the sauna would have been uh, unfortunately most of the uh, information here is in finnish on most of the signs so I mentioned before, Glenn, about the, the edge of the Baltic Sea being here, and it's the erosion from the waves that has sort of started carving out these caves. And you want me to go in there? Oh, definitely. You're okay with a 50-year-old man crawling on his belly to go in a cave? Oh, yeah, of course, mate. So how is it in there? Could you actually have a sauna? Well. It doesn't seem to go that far back, but I wonder if... He stoned it off. Well, or if you have to really crawl in there, and I'm not so sure that I'm happy going that much deeper. I'll have a look and see what I can find over there. Yeah. But maybe we'll have a keep, keep looking around and see if there's somewhere else where you can get in and actually have a sauna in here. Um, it's only a few meters back, to be honest. It's very low, um, and it doesn't seem to go further back there. So either he had a very small, Sauna, or we need to keep looking. I can't say that he would have a sauna too far away from his little little uh, hut that he built up there. So I'm assuming this little cave section here would be his sauna, but we're gonna go and have a look further down the path to see if we can find anything different. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> But um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna go and have a look. But I don't think there's anything else because his house was just there, where all those stones have been packed up, and uh, the cave is just there. And I think that would be his sauna because you wouldn't want your sauna too far, too much far farther away from from your actual house. So now I've come down from the top of the cave where he's uh where his, just there, where his uh, sauna, we believe his sauna cave is. If you come down these stairs here, like I said, stairs are everywhere, so don't go climbing on any rocks because there's a lot of loose stuff here. Um, you might fall and things are quite steep despite what they look like because we're filming on a GoPro. So remember, remember that, yes. Okay, so we're just, we're gonna leave the hermit cave and the, and the house right now, and we're just gonna continue on down the trail a bit. There's a couple of trails around here, like you saw at the start of the video. Um, they've got blue and yellow markings, at least in this section of the trail, just up on the tree. So if you keep finding those 
you keep on the worn path and you keep finding those dots on the trees, you should be good. So another good thing about uh, this, uh, this time of year, the autumn time, we chose to come and do it in autumn because it's not slippery, it's not wet and snowy. It hasn't actually rained too much. In the summer, it could, uh, could be quite strenuous for people who aren't really that fit because it could get quite hot in here. But this time of year, I think is the best because not only is it not slippery, it's relatively dry, but all the berries, like, I've been showing you are all ripening right now. So you got some blueberry and borlocker at the moment. And there's another, I think it's a tudana berry. I can't quite, I can't remember that one, but not a lot of people eat them. They're, they're the orange ones I showed you before. They're very sour or tangy and people don't tend to eat them, but they're very high in vitamin C. We're just uh, now going to, find the, what was it, a sacrificial rock. Yeah. yeah, so there's supposed to be some sort of a cave painting or ancient painting. Not sure how old it is. We can leave that information in the in the blog post, but um, yeah, we're just walking along that trail at the moment, or at least a trail. <laughs> um, so hopefully we run into the rock soon. So, um, we've had to turn around because uh, apparently we've gone past the rock somewhere. So we're just going to go back up to the cave area and see if we can find the, the rock because I'm not too sure where it is. It must, it, it might be around the cave somewhere, but we don't know. We, we're just going to head back. We, the path trail that we were on was heading downhill quickly, which makes me believe that it's either the Kiros, the ring path around the base of this mountain that leads back to the first car park, or it's going to the lake. So two areas that we don't want to go yet, just yet. So we're going back up to see if we can find it. So <laughs> we found a little rock outcrop here. There seems to be all little outcrops along here through this trail it doesn't seem to be it though um we're still in the search for it can't be too far away now but seems like it's not it this way somewhere okay i thought someone said that we, it was supposed to be on the on the stone itself well I, that's what i thought but we didn't find it yeah take a look at this Mm. That says we're there, right on top of it. Somewhere here. Yeah, I'm trying to find that. Might be a bit difficult though, because I can't seem to see where it would be. We might have to ask some locals to see where the um, where this uh, painting is. Anteeksi, tiedätkö missä tämä kallio maalaus on? Se on, se on täällä, mutta en tiedä missä se on. Tiedätkö, kun en itse asiassa tiedä, kun se on sellainen, sehän vasta löydettiin, löydettiin vähän aikaa sitten, Joo. muutamia vuosia sitten. Ja jotkut sanoo, että onko se oikea vai ei. Joo, ymmärrän. 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 Onko teillä mitä tietoa siitä, niin kuin, mitä siinä sanottiin? Mä, 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 mä löydän äh, infoa äh, Wikipediassa. Joo. Mutta me haluamme ottaa oma, oma kuvia. Joo. Ei valitettavasti sitä mä en tiedä. Joo, ei hätä. Mä tiedän, mutta sitä ei. Joo. Me etsimme vielä. Joo, Joo. Siis se, Wikipediassa muistaakseni oli aika niin kuin selkeä kuva, mutta sitten mitä mä oon nähnyt, niitä, mitä on ollut, että ne ei ole niin ollenkaan tullut. Joo, me, me teemme podcasti ja YouTube. Joo. Uh, video. Joo. Ja se voi olla hyvä, jos meillä on oma. Joo. Niin. Oho. Ui, 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 ui. Mikäs tämä? Tonttu hyppäs sieltä. <laughs> Joo, sori, ei voi ei, ei, ei ei ottaa. Niin. Kiitos. Kiitos. Joo, ei mitään. So uh, yeah, just remember when you come here guys that most stuff isn't signed very well. So you've got the, you've got the hermit area up the top which leads into the, the sacrificial stone there. And we're just trying to find this cave painting, but it, unless unless it's in the area where where some 
locals have lit a fire inside that cave that I was talking about and it's charred the wall. I, we can't seem to find the painting and the signage of this area isn't too good. But if you just have, like now we're standing back, you can see a bit more. That's the top ridge there. It's the cave and the Herman area. There's the stairs. And then you've got trails down into these stairs here, which lead into that area there. So it's all within the same area as each other. So if you come here for the day, you can probably bring some food, but it doesn't look like there's any fire pits or anything here. And it actually says, do not light fires, despite someone lighting a fire in that cave. We can't seem to find this rock where it is. And there's a very large lack of actual trail markings in this area as well. So just remember, don't just follow those dots, follow the dots, the blue and yellow dots. If you're going to go for a walk, always remember to look for the dots on trees and rocks in front of you because you're going to get lost out here because, uh, gee, we, we, there's no signs telling us where the actual, any of this stuff is. We, we've just found it all ourselves. All the signs are in Finnish and they just tell you the story of the specific thing. They don't actually tell you where to go to get it. So just be careful. This rock area here has everything on the one area and unfortunately there's no fireplaces so please don't light a fire because I'm I'm wondering if the fire that was lit inside that cave there is how I actually covered up this painting. Yeah I, I, do, I can't tell I don't know but you know the graffiti in that caved area was yeah so if someone's willing to graffiti that I, I would say somebody would have done uh, the, also to the painting but we just can't seem to find it. We've walked around here for a while now, over in that area up the top, we've walked along the trail. We can't seem to find any of the things that we're supposed to. Yeah, and be careful not to drop into there because, oh, look, there's frogs and that in, in there. Wow, it's a little, little caves and stuff everywhere here. So just be careful where you step to because uh, like I said, the paths aren't really that defined. The signs aren't really defining either. It's very close to, where the cave is, you come down the stairs, just there, and then you can come down here and there's, there's another couple of set of stairs here that leads you to what looks like the sacrificial rock there because it looks like a, a mushroom just over there. So yeah, if you look here, just up the top there, on there, is where his hermit is. You just come down the hill via the stairs over there and then you walk into this, this little, little area here, this lovely little area here and you find the sacrificial rock. Yeah, so this is called the sacrificial stone. I don't think there's any proof that many Lapish children were actually sacrificed here, but this is kind of the, the local myth. And it's, it was created in the kind of mounting forming process of this area. Um, this uh, lower part is the actual bedrock. So it's continuously connected to the bedrock of this area and the top part uh, more of a granite like material was formed as, as it was molten rock and so it's kind of fused and connected with the bedrock and then again where the where the shore of the Baltic Sea or the Baltic Lake was here it wore away this softer lower part so you've got this kind of mushroom like shape where the harder rock hasn't eroded and because it kind of looks like a mushroom or maybe a table, then it's become known as the sacrificial stone. So again, there's only information in Finnish, but we can put some information in the blog post of Nordic Explorer in English to tell you what it is. But they were right when they said it looked like a mushroom because to be honest, that looks like a massive top of a mushroom and there's the stalk and you can walk underneath it and around it. So uh, we're just underneath the rock here at the moment and it seems like we've got a lot of people carving their names in here. It says not to have a fire, yet there's a lot of people have lit a fire under here and we're currently underneath the uh, mushroom head section of this rock. So hopefully it doesn't collapse, but we have got here from, yeah, this is, seems to be where everyone comes to carve their stuff into the rock. So hopefully we'll be able to find this uh, painting on this area uh, so that we can actually show you the painting. It's been here for a, a very long time. 
because it seems like there's a lot of people who have uh, chose to take this and def deface it, which is quite a shame. But unlike uh, like all societies, we all have our delinquents, <laughs> for want of a better word. So now we're just gonna head up through and go around to the back side of it because that's apparently where this uh, painting is we hope to show you. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll be able to catch a sighting of it soon. Yeah, the search doesn't seem to be going too well. <laughs> At least we found the rock. Yeah, exactly. Did we find it? We went on a, a yomp. Yeah. It's interesting to see what's around here. Damn, <laughs> been searching for this thing for a while now and we can't seem to find the little outcrop that it would be on. That's a bit of a shame, but we'll continue to look. I just, uh, I forgot to tell you about this season in Finland. Uh, it's quite prominent for moose flies. I had one just land on my mustache and try and get up into my hair. So when you come here, try and, try and uh, if you can, get some moose fly repellent or uh, wear tight clothes, but they seem to get in into everything. So just when you uh, get back, you might, if you feel something crawling on you, something probably is crawling on you. It's a moose fly, so get rid of it before, before all that happens. Yes, so let's uh, go back up. As you can see, the little cliff edge just there. That comes down from the, the stairs, which are right there from the hut. So it's not far away. Whilst on our way out, we found the painting in the corner of the hermit's hut. It had been graffitied with fire like we suspected. We filmed this, but our camera malfunctioned and we lost the footage. This is the corner we were talking about. So, what do you think about the area, Mark? I think it's, um, I think it's quite something. It's, it's quite a compact area, so you don't have to walk that far away. But because it's so up and down, I'm really feeling it in my legs. Come with a sturdy pair of shoes, um, but you don't need to be there more than an hour to see everything. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. These stairs can get a bit steep, so remember, there is no access to wheelchairs for this area, unfortunately. Um, people who need crutches, um, and maybe even older generation people, we should, uh, be advised that it, there are some really steep sections. They're not very far, but hey, I'm 32 and I'm breathing. Yeah. <laughs> and when we arrived, there was a family here, three generations, young kids, parents, and a grandparent. They seem to handle it okay, but we're puffing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate, it's, it's this cold weather with me. I blame my asthma. That's what I say. But we're heading back now. We're at the top of Puhavori. Another view of the lake just before we go. Not that you can really see it on this camera, but it's, uh, yeah, it's quite special. So we're gonna head back down to the car. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.